Hi, you've probably used this website before, possibly even visited it recently, and maybe even wondered to yourself, where does that data come from? Well, I'm gonna show you where that data comes from and how you could possibly use it to build your own site and possibly even make your own insights to the data. So this website over here for the coronavirus COVID-19 is created by John Hopkins University. It displays a total here on the top left corner and then totals for each and every single country for the number of confirmed cases. There's even map data and charts on this page. It kind of looks intimidating. It's, you know, as a novice web developer thinking to yourself like, whoa, this is a really complicated page. How could I build this myself? Well, first off, getting the data is actually not too bad. And I'm gonna show you where that comes from. That data actually is stored on GitHub. So GitHub, John Hopkins University has their own repository over here. And this data for the website is actually stored in CSV files, comma separated value. I'll show you what a comma separated value list looks like and how you could use that data to make your own website just like that. So on the John Hopkins website, when you first land on it, you're actually gonna land on the master branch and I'll be linking that below my video. That master branch contains various CSV files, but the one that I'm interested in is the one that's being used on the website. That data actually gets updated very often. So if we go to the branches over here and click on web data, once that loads over here, we have the web data. And the area that I'm interested in at the moment is the left-hand side over here in that information. So to find that information, if we click on data, we'll get a file called cases underscore country CSV. And that file, if we open it up, it's a comma separated value list, but GitHub being awesome, takes that CSV file and displays it in this really cool table. This table is searchable. It has numbers on the side. It has bolded headers, alternating colors for each row of data, but this is not really what the data looks like. There's no commas or anything like that separating the data as I just described, a comma separated value list. To get that, you need to click on the raw button. The raw button gives us the raw file format. GitHub over here, they're just being awesome, noticing it's a CSV file and giving us this really cool format. Tells us even the number of lines over here, like just so awesome. So if we go to this uh, page over here, we go to the raw, so I'm just gonna click on that again, raw right there we get the raw CSV file. So the first line of that file is our header. That header right there, you don't have to have a header, but we do have a header over here. Nothing special, it's the same as every other line. And what it has is commas in between each and every single row. You can consider this line over here a row, and then the commas, to separate them, they separate the columns. So this is one row of data. And then this is another row of data. Oops, let me just select Australia there. This is one row of data right there. So each line is a new row of data. So country, region, comma, last update, comma, lat, comma, long, those are different columns. So each column is separated by a comma. So if we look, see country, region, last update, and lat, long, go back to the previous page. Over here, we get country, region, last update, lat, and long. So going back to the raw file over there, you can see that on the next row of data over here that each country name over here is the first item on that list. And then right after that, we have the date separated by a comma. So that's all that a comma separated value list is. Every row of data or every new line is a row. And then every column of data is just separated by a comma. As developers, we can take this data, pull it into our application, and then put it into a data structure, and then use that data structure to save it into our own databases, take that data and display it in a web application. And that's exactly what I've done over here is I've created a React application and that React application that I've created mimics the data that we see on this website over here. So this is the real live application over here. And what I've done is I've taken that raw CSV file and I've pulled it into my application to display that same data. 
So taking a look at those totals over here, you see 1,414,000. Well, if we take a look over here, we also have 1,414,000. In my application, I've added a little bit of functionality, and that little bit of functionality allows me to um, sort the, the data by total. It allows me to sort the data by country name. And using your imagination, you could do whatever you want with this data. You could collapse the data by regions, by continents. You could display charts. You could do whatever you want. And with this particular example over here, it's just built using React, Axios, and Bootstrap. So it's a really simple example that I'll be showing you in my next video. How you can build, um, how you can build an application using this CSV data for COVID-19 to build your own application to go ahead and display whatever information you want or create whatever alerts you want or um, manipulate and even inspect that data to find your own insights. So I challenge you to do this. It's really topical. It's information that you can explore and maybe learn more about. And it's really interesting to be able to use real data like this to create an application that perhaps maybe you can share with others. So look forward to showing you how you can do that in my next video.